Welcome to Power Boat Talk, the podcast where we talk everything performance boats with your host, Joe Road. Well, hello, and welcome to my fifth episode of Power Boat Talk. I hope you've been enjoying it, and I hope you'll enjoy this episode as well. Today, I'm going to be talking with Ron Lund. Ron's not a, not a household name in the boating industry. He's a cabinet maker by trade. But Ron recently bought himself a couple boat molds. And so now Ron is a boat builder. So I thought it was really interesting when I saw his story on social media to, to talk to him and, and kind of see how he got into this whole process and, and follow along with, with him going to market with these boats. So thank you again for listening. And I hope you enjoy today's talk with Ron Lund. All right. Uh, good evening, Ron. Uh, how, how, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Joe. How are you doing? Good. I'm looking forward to talking to you. I mean, you've got a, you know, I think I've, we spoke before and uh, I just happened to stumble on one of your posts. I, I don't know if it was maybe one of the jet boat forums on Facebook, but I uh, uh, saw your 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 unique endeavor where um, it looked like you're on the path to becoming a, a boat builder. Um, and so I thought it was really interesting and, and wanted to talk to you about it. And so um, maybe start with where you're at now. What's, uh, what's going on with, with the Rogers hole that, that you've uh, created? Yeah, well, um, yeah, we're starting the production of one. And, and I'd like to bring them back. I mean, Rogers are very well known and, and high quality and great uh, race boats. So probably you know, one of the best V-bottom hulls made. And uh, these molds had been kind of tucked away for the last 20, 25 years. Um, and about a year and a half ago, I think that would have been October of 2021, I had kind of a light day and I thought I'm gonna take the day off and I'm down in San Diego, but I heard that the molds were in Corona. And just out of the blue, I thought, I'm just gonna go up there and drive around up and down this commercial area. And after about, a oh, half hour or so, I look over to my left and there's the 20 foot Bonneville Classic sitting there. I thought, holy crap. So I end up going inside the building and and um, asking for the owner of the molds. And that's kind of how it all started. And I uh, told him that, you know, I'd like to talk to him about purchasing them. And I know um, he, that he had had them for quite a while, but uh, I wasn't sure you know, how he was going to take it. I'm just walking in, you know, guy out in the street. So I told him, I, 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 I'd imagine, you know, a hundred people have come in just like me saying, Hey, I want to buy those molds. And I just told him, I'm serious about this. I really do want to buy them and bring them back. Um, and it probably took four or five months. I'm not sure that he, it, he wasn't quite ready to sell them. And it was March of 2022 that I called him. We'd gone back and forth on text and emails and stuff. And finally I just called and said, hey, if you're not interested in selling them, let me know, because I'll move on. But if you are, give me a call. The next morning, my phone rang about 7.30 in the morning and he said, let's make a deal. <laughs> wow. So that's, that's how it started. And again, I'm not in the circle of boats. I mean, I love boats. I, the first jet boat I ever drove was probably in 1972. I was 11 years old and it was a Rogers that my uncle owned. Uh, and so this just kind of came about, we, we raced a 19 Rogers TR in circle boats, uh, uh, off and on since, uh, 09. And, um, I just, I just love jet boats. So mm -hmm. I'm more of a groupie than a, than a builder. <laughs> so, so, but so I, it's, so, it's, oh, go ahead. so you did, so you didn't, so when you, I mean, you literally just heard the thing was in Corona, you had no other tips or ideas on where it was at I, I you know i i just knew it was in corona in the industrial areas and wow. it was at a construction site basically or construction uh, a construction company's uh space but shockwave is there you know all, it's off maple street all the all those boat builders used to be there carrera and everything oh, okay so I thought, well i'm just gonna start there and i just started going up and down the streets and and i knew people who knew where they were but they wouldn't even tell me who where they were. Oh. <laughs> it was like this big secret, and and so you know, I, even when I wasn't interested in buying them, they wouldn't tell me. But uh, uh, 
I just, uh, I don't know, maybe it was a little bit meant to be. Uh, yeah. But my, my uncle passed away and he knew I was big into the racing and loved the Rogers bus. And he really backed us up. And so maybe there were some uh, outside forces. That, yeah, that there you go. Brought me and I like to think that way on the way. Yeah. So you find these molds, uh, guy agrees on a price, which I don't know how you, how you would come up with that. That'd be yeah, interesting. It, 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 I kind of had an idea of what he paid for him, and he didn't pay much from Roger. Mm-hmm. But uh, and and I mean, there's kind of a going rate for for molds. So uh, these have been sitting out for quite a while. They hadn't been you know trashed or anything stacked in them, but they've been in the sun for 20 years, so they need to be buffed out. And that uh, I had uh, also talked to in the in this four or five months span, I had talked to uh, the, the people at Fiber Composites uh, about these molds and if they were interested in building these. So that when they said they were, that got me more excited about it because mm. I had somebody to work with. Okay. Fiber Composites, that's, uh, I believe, what, Joel Casitas? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And they and they just just so people who aren't they, they build they actually build boats for a lot of a lot of the West Coast guys. They're kind of a one stop glass shop for a lot of people. Correct. Correct. And then they have the resources for for people to set pumps and do the rigging and you know you know the, oh, okay. most places Southern California has everything on the way, but uh, uh, upholstery, all that stuff. But, but we wanted to really just build bear holes at this point, just to get some out there mm-hmm. and, and, and see what the interest was. Um, so it's just, you know, basically on the ground floor, we're starting out slow and, and um, just trying to, trying to feel it out. But, you know, there are a couple of other guys that are building some small boats. And let's face it, the big companies, I remember talking to Harry at Advantage years ago when I, when I bought mine, and uh, my Advantage that I have, and he said, you know, we can build these 18 foot jet boats, but we don't make that much money on them. But we can build a 22 foot citation, which was that was their big boat at the time, and 24 right. foot offshore. He said, it's a little more glass, it's a little more upholstery, um, and let's say in, inboard outboard type thing, but the propulsion is the same, whether that's going to go in a 20 foot boat or a 24. He said, there's so much more markup in the big boats. So the little boats just kind of drifted away. There was no focus on them. And let's face it, if you go to have a suit or any place nowadays, you almost have to have a 25 or bigger. Yeah. You know, yeah. but I still show up with my 20 foot advantage and, and my 19 foot Rogers and I go to the lake and I think they're cooler than the, a lot of the, the big boats because they're just different. Yeah. And then there was, I mean, I saw it like in, when the economy got bad in like 2008, um, I, I, I was selling parts at the time, and it, I saw a real resurgence then. People were, it, people were just simplifying. You know, guys were. I remember guys that even, you know, where the economy didn't hurt them, and they still had the money. They they would say, you know, I just, I, it, it just doesn't seem, it just seems stupid to put a thousand dollars worth of gas in a boat now when I can go back and get my twenty one Spectra or whatever. And and right. I forgot how much fun it was and how much simpler it was and, and just how much easier. And it, it seems since then, it, it just seems like it's kind of, there's actually been a pretty good movement that way. Yeah. And I think some of it is us older guys going back to our roots, you know, it's kind of like uh, uh, anything that we had, you know, we liked the old cars from the 70s, 60s, 70s, the boats yeah. from the 70s, the uh, I mean, I've got a, a, a YZ400, a 1977 oh. <laughs> dirt bike. I mean, awesome. you know, we kind of like that nostalgia stuff. Uh-huh. So, although yeah. I'm getting way too old to be doing that riding anymore. So. Yeah, yeah, especially on a, especially on a YZ, they're cool. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yep. So so you so you approach the guys at Fiber Concepts and or, and you're you're ready to go. Then how's it? Where does it go from there? Does does the mold need work? Do you guys have to do any kind of uh, redesigns or changes on it or we really didn't want to change the molds at all you know so we it's basically they were in good shape because they hadn't been they really hadn't even probably moved in 20 years uh the guy that had them just had them sitting in a rack so it was just a matter of uh polishing out the oxidation mm-hmm. um and and buffing it up so it was you know uh 16 18 coats of wax for the bottom uh, because that was one that was exposed to the sun and the deck mold was flipped on top of that. So 
it was in pretty good shape on the bottom mm -hmm. uh, on the mole side. So it was really just a matter of cleaning it up. And, and the Rogers have the round uh, sides on the transoms, mm -hmm. the, the barrel sides. Mm -hmm. So they were a little nervous, and so was I about the mold, about it sticking, <laughs> you know, trying to pull that out because you got to pull it forward and up. You okay. can't just pull it straight up. Uh, so you're kind of pulling it forward out of the mold, out of that radius. And uh, so they waxed the, the heck out of it, and, uh, and everything worked great. It worked really well because I remember actually seeing – a advantage had this mold in the late late eighties, and I remember being at Advantage there in Anaheim, and they were doing gel repair on a twenty foot Bonneville, and because uh, it had stuck in the mold, mm -hmm. you know. And shortly after that, Roger pulled the molds back. Harry was doing really well, and I think Roger went, "Hey, you know, uh, you haven't actually bought that mold. I'm taking that one back." <laughs> and uh, he he pulled that one, and he sold them the. 18 uh, Bonneville, which Advantage still has. Okay. There. So, so that was actually a Rogers mold that, that he has? Correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so if you see the Advantage classics, and I still have some of the old catalogs and that that show Rogers mode in there as one, as part of their lineup. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, and I know we still, uh, Tom Peterson up in Havasu, I know he's he sells and rigs those things all the time still. Yep, yep. I think they have one in the mold right now. Yeah, uh, an 18 Bonneville, and they just and they did that outboard last year. I, I'm not sure if it's complete, but they but they ran it. Oh, okay, I didn't uh, see that. Yeah, yeah, the, it's like I can't even remember. Is it a is it a three? It, it's one of the big Mercs on it. Uh huh. And I, I guess it's just you know it's all fly by wires. What uh, uh, they were telling me it was going to be. There's no, oh, okay, yeah, no yeah, all the new stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it was also going to be about ninety thousand bucks. Is what yeah, exactly. Doing. Exactly. <laughs> so, so our intention really was to build some halls for, you know, a lot of Jeppo guys are, are the garage mechanic kind of guys and maybe give them the resource list or have resources for them. And they could have maybe the intake set by somebody, but maybe they want to do the, the rail kit and their, their own motor, their own upholstery. You know, it's kind of like, or you could even buy a donor boat and just swap stuff over and have a brand new hull. For not much, not a whole lot more than what it costs to re-gel an old forty-five-year-old, you know, hull. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And so that was kind of my concept. I said, why, why pay twelve thousand for a re-gel job if you can have sixteen, eighteen thousand, and have a brand new boat? Yeah. And yeah. with the modern resins and and the uh, and the glass. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Awesome. So how did you, um, th did you get the, I, I saw the first one. It was the green one, right? Green and white. And yeah. And we're still working on that one. They're, they've been super busy over there. So I, I haven't really, you know, put a lot of pressure on them. They've got, they got so much boat repair and they do a lot of commercial stuff too. So mm -hmm. this, we're just, we're just taking our time on this. Yeah. No, that's, is that, that's actually yours? What's that? that? The first one's actually your boat? Um, it's going to be a display boat uh, to take to shows was the intention and and for sale. I mean, okay. if somebody wanted to pick it up, then we build another one. You okay. Know? I mean, okay. I, I build the 19 next or, or you, you know, we have uh, uh, Jason Roush is building a trailer for us right now. And uh, so that's going to be uh, sitting under that one. And uh uh, I've also used Nick Velour, you know, for, for mm -hmm. a custom trailer under my um, my 19, my race boat that I have. Mm -hmm. So, again, we want to have resources and maybe a couple people for each thing that we could give people so they could do it on their own. Yeah, yeah, good idea, good idea. Because if, if you do a complete boat, then we have to, and we're doing motors, and now we got to be carb compliant and everything else. You know, this way, it's more of a, it's more of a kit. Yeah, right, own. right. So, right. yeah. Well, I have to say I loved it, and I have to tell you, I, I I didn't really even remember that Rogers having that bigger, the bigger hole. Um, and when I saw the pictures, I I, I happen to love green. <laughs> Not too many people oh, okay. do, so I'm really surprised you did it. But it was beautiful. I think it's beautiful. I think it's really nice. Thank you. I even in the '70s, I always wanted a green boat, the lime green boat. So that's so, so now that's why I wanted to build it. And this one will be an open bow, so it's a little more marketable uh, because probably. 
80 percent of the people want an open bow i myself an old school mm -hmm. i'd rather have a closed deck myself mm -hmm. but let's face it when you have families and stuff like that yeah the the, the rogers the 19 and the 20 if you look at the transom they're the same width oh. it's a small boat it's okay. a small silhouette boat it's a mm -hmm. little hot rod mm -hmm. and and roger told me the bottom on a 20 is faster than the bottom on the 19. if mm -hmm. you look at the the straights and everything they're they're a lot bigger uh, uh so it's it's all together different you know mm -hmm. it's got the drop chines that that the 19 and 20 are known for but the bottom itself is different mm -hmm. yeah it, it it is hard to you know i don't think any no no performance guy likes an open bow but it's it's hard to it's hard to pass on the pra practicality of it you know it really yeah, is yeah well my advantage is the closed deck there was a time I thought we might cut it open. I talked to Harry about it, and I'm I'm so glad he never did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. and I just ended up giving that one to my son, so he has it now. Oh man, cool dad. So yeah, <laughs> keep it in the family. Hey, if I if all I can do is leave each of my kids a, a boat or two, that, I'm good with that. Man, man. <laughs> so, so in a way, this is my legacy. I mean, I've been a cabinet maker for. 45 years now uh -huh. and and uh boating has always been something that i've loved to do but i've always been outside of the circle being down here in san diego uh but um it's kind of got me into it you know kind of by accident but uh uh I, I love it it's just something different yeah that's a great next chapter yeah yeah and and you know the, the boats i can have things done i don't have to be lifting cabinets myself anymore since i'm yeah, uh, getting getting a little bit on the older side. Yeah, so so the intention is, uh, you know, you're gonna do some shows, have us do boat show type stuff, and see exactly if, see if you can move yep. some move some product. Right, right. Get them back out there because I think there is a certain you know following, and it seems like lately there's a lot of uh, winger boats out there now. Mm -hmm. People are really getting into those, and uh, and they're great boats too. Um, and you know, let's face it, you got the, the Daytonas and the tunnel boats and things like that too. So, uh, as far as a V bottom out there, there's not a lot of, uh, of V bottoms and really they're the most practical if you're going to be out on the river and like do some tubing and skiing, which seems to almost be outdated nowadays, but, but, um, you know, it's, people are still out there playing on toys. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think you're, you'll come back and you, you'll have grandkids soon or at some point. <laughs> yep. 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 So. Yeah. So that's what it's all about. Awesome. It's, it's, it's awesome family fun. I mean, I grew oh, up on Havasu. Nothing better. And, and I still go to Havasu because that's where I always went. My uh -huh. kids, we always went to Havasu. Uh, and so we're down there at Three Dunes with all those, you know, uh, 40 foot, you know, $300,000 boats. Mm -hmm. And we got our little jet boat parked in there. So. <laughs> And, and, and we went there when you used to be able to ski out of it, right? Uh huh. So yeah, no, you probably have more fun than all of them. Well, we're still out there tubing and skiing, wakeboarding. I mean, I'm still able to do a short start and uh, and do my little solemn thing, but I don't go very far. Uh, and I'll tube with the kids as long as I can do it. I'm going to go out there and beat myself up. Yeah, awesome. So. Um, how did you how did you get started in boating? What's have you, you doing it since you're a kid or? Yeah, about 1971, 72, my uncle had gotten into boats and he sold us a little 16 foot, we would call it SK design with a it had a 75 horse McCulloch on it. And he sold us that and he bought a Rogers, a super cyclone, 18 foot super cyclone. And that's, I think the following year was the first year I ever drove a jet boat. Uh, I was 11 years old and, and I was hooked. And he would cut us loose. We'd go up to the Sierras, to uh, Mammoth Pool Reservoir. My, I, I, I think I was maybe 12 at that time. And my cousin was nine. And, you know, back then he'd just say, okay, take off, just be safe. And we'd go around the corner and he said, he'd laugh because later in life he told me, because I hear you sneak around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> wide open you know so we're these two little kids doing 65 miles an hour in a little jet boat playing around and uh but we we actually uh trolled for trout 
up there with this jet boat. And mm-hmm. I mean, we just, it was just, a, it, was, it was a great time growing up. Yeah. And, and that's how I got into the jet boats. I think uh, my first jet boat was an old Tahiti, um, which was kind of the, the same one as the, uh, the Sidewinder had the round uh, plexiglass windshield in the front, little mm-hmm. 16 foot with the old mobile in it. And I bought that as a basket case and had that put together. I was, uh, I think I was 17 or 18. And then after that, I bought my friend's Eliminator 20 foot sport cruiser when I was uh, 21, I think. And so I, I, I just like jet boats. I like the safety of them. The kids mm-hmm. can sit on the, you know, mm-hmm. sit on the swim set and you can move them around. But yeah, I've pretty much been a jet boat guy for, for years and years. Mm-hmm. And then you, and you mentioned some racing. How did you get into that? How did you get into the racing? Uh, SoCal jet boats, they were, they were covering back in the, um, gosh, I think it was around 07 that they were, they were kind of watching some of the circle boat race and following. So I started following it and there was one guy, little Rick they called him. Uh, he was putting the Liberty together and they were going to be racing at Bakersfield. And that, that would have been 08. I told my son, I said, Hey, let's go up there and just go check this out. And so we went up there ended up helping Rick and, uh, launching his boat and everything else. And we just had a great time. And I said, we got to do this. And at that time, I had already bought my 19 TR off of eBay, actually. It came out of Pomona. And I was having it re-gel coated at Orange County uh, Boat Repair. Mm-hmm. So it was the, I was restoring it at the time. And that's the boat we ended up racing. I mean, it's a tank. But we've got a pretty good uh, Bostic power plant and uh, that, that we've been running since my son's been driving the last for 45 years and uh the thing does uh pretty good it's, we haven't quite hit the 100 mile an hour mark but we're pretty darn close wow fantastic and now and so we're talking we're, about the circle boat it's a comp yeah, comp, comp jet right comp jet yeah okay. uh he we're going to take this next year off but uh in the spring uh at, at in parker uh i think we were three or three boats i think is what we were running in the in the heats and he actually had one GPS speed of 99.6. Wow. And, oh, man, it was so close. I think the, the fastest I ever did when I, I was drive, driving in 9, 10, and 11. And at that point, I think I did a 93 point something. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's a little lighter. And, uh, you know, he grew up with motocross, so he's a little more daring than I am. Mm-hmm. And Boston picked up the horsepower in our motor a little yeah. bit too. So, <laughs> how, 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 how'd your how'd your son talk you out of the ride? You know, I just felt like it was he was it was time for him. Uh-huh. And uh, what happened? I think it was 2015. I told my son Vance. I said, "Hey, I said uh, there's a race in Bakersfield. We got the motor sitting here. If you want to go, we'll do it. It's a good it's a good course. It's a big course, and I think you'll you'll like it." He went out there and tested, and he's he went to college. He's a mechanical engineer. He's always been very calculated on everything he does, but he does everything well. He goes out there, tests. He comes back down. Look at the GPS. It's like 78 miles an hour. I'm thinking, okay, well, that's Vance being careful, checking things out. Uh-huh. And being a rookie, he has to be on the outside, and I think there were six boats in this race. Oh, wow. When they dropped the flag, he was the first one to the pin. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was running 92 mile an hour. Run, you know, straightaway speeds. <laughs> yeah, wow. You know, you're not going to win up from the outside, but but he was running good. He, uh-huh. was, uh, he, he floored me. And to be honest with you, I had tears in my eyes. I was on the radio with him, and I mean, just uh, the pride. And oh, awesome. Just, you know, it, it was cool. And so it's been a, a very much a family thing. We've gone to uh, Burley uh, six, I think it happened six or seven times. Oh, have so you really? Gone. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah, we've gone to Idaho and raced with those guys and mm-hmm. had a great time up there. Uh, that's almost like been our summer vacation. Mm-hmm. So, uh, no, we were we were hooked on it. So it's it's hard to not go racing. You know, this next year is going to be tough when those when those races come up and you go. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. actually, we didn't go this last Thanksgiving, and I had four days off. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I, we're never home on Thanksgiving. We're always at Parker. Race. Uh-huh. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so when you had the boat, you, you didn't you didn't buy the boat to go racing, um, but when you decided to go racing, what what did you have to do as far as the, the hardware and stuff? Kind of talk maybe about some of the particulars. 
Well, this is where I always give the heart, the guys a hard time because everybody thinks that, you know, you got to have the place, you got to have, you know, there's strip down race bus. I have CF numbers on our boat, always mm-hmm. have. It's got the subfloor, it's got carpet, it's got seat pedestals. Oh. And so it's got the saddle tanks. You know, like we quit using those and I put the tank in the middle, but it is a full on ski boat. And, the, and that's where we, we tease the guys go, hey, this thing's a, it's a, it's a ski boat. It's mm-hmm. just a ski boat with a, with a big motor. And, and Bostic, James builds a really good motor. So we've had no issues ever. We, and, and I'm a cabin maker by trade, I'm not a motor guy. So it's a single car. Real simple. We will run the valves, you know, every couple of races. We don't even run the valves all the time. So, um, you know, it's good, good, you know, 14 to 1 compressions. So we're running good fuel and everything oh, okay. else in it. And, uh, you know, dyno to over 800 horse. So. Oh, okay. I was going to ask you. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And yeah what's, so it, what's, what's the, do you have a cubic inch limit in that class? The cubic inch limit is 515. Okay. And, um, yeah, when I when I first started in '09, I had the motor that came with it off eBay. It was just a little 427 in it, and we topped out at 82 miles an hour. That was it. Uh, and we raced two seasons like that. And the third season, I had the I had the 509 built, and then it was like uh, without changing any setup, just going out the first time. Because we don't really test; we would just go to the races, and that's our test, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was so ill handling. My daughter says she was crying on the shore because oh, no. <laughs> I was going to crash because, <laughs> oh, no. you know, because you're jumping, you know, 10 miles an hour and all that power, it was, it was a handful. It was all over the place until we got it tamed down. And Harold Bruce with Arnie Marine, he helped us out. Oh, sure. Uh-huh. Uh, told, told us what to do and stuff. And, and that, that helped a, a, an awful lot. He was, he helped a lot of us out there, uh, you know, to get our boats uh, safe, I guess you could say. You know, and we don't have place on our boat, so it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not, uh, it, it turns a little wide because of that, because you can't slam the nose down. You mm-hmm. have to glide, kind of glide into the corner a little bit, back off a little bit earlier than everybody else, glide into the corner, let the boat settle, and then turn. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we have the straightaway speed. So I always intended to build a race boat, and this was always my family boat, and it just never happened. Mm-hmm. I just, I, and I never wanted to make this the race boat and put plates in it and do all the other stuff. So, uh, I think, I think she's retired now though. Really? <laughs> yeah. If anything, I'd love to build another 19, a new uh-huh. one that's a little lighter. Cause Rogers, one reason you see Rogers around still is if you look right on the brochure, um, a 19 foot Rogers bear hull, he says is 925 pounds. Wow. They're, they weigh a ton. And then the 20 foot, like the one we're building now, is, I think, is 10, 10, 50 or something like that. So that's why they're still around. They're they're just overbuilt. Uh huh. Yeah. So, so I would like to build them with the modern technology and probably knock off, you know, 400 pounds, which uh-huh. would be huge. Yeah. Yeah. That, that'll get you over the, the 100 mile an hour spot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm curious. So going back to do you, do you guys because do you run a do you like do you run a diverter on it or we're we're uh, we do have a, a a droop on it with some wedges, but we're all fixed. Okay, and we're the only one that still we we run a reverse. Everybody else is you know straight up racing. Oh, okay, uh, okay. On it, we actually have the ram's horn on it and a reverse on it, so we back off the trailer and we, we gotcha. come to the gotcha. it, It's a ski. It's a ski boat. I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So you don't. So in the turn, you. I mean, you're just driving in the turn. You've got you've got no plates. You've got nothing to bring you down into the turn. Right, right, and just you know, we've added you know more turn pins underneath the boat. Oh, okay. To, to get it to pivot better, uh, the one that Roger originally put in it was in the engine well in that in that sump area, and mm-hmm. then I cut a hole in the floor, the sub floor that that we have, and and I put one up a, up another. Uh, about 16 inches or something to get get the pivot point a little farther up because we couldn't get it to turn in the corners before. Mm-hmm. Mm. So the um, and then you said uh, Harold Bruce on the hardware just just getting the the shoe and the ride plate and the wedges all working together, figuring out that whole combination. Exactly, and the pits. He told us just to yeah to, to put a put this wedge in and try this, and then and and uh, mess with the ride plate a little bit. 
yeah, we got it. We got a team down pretty quick with just putting the, uh, uh, a wedge in it just to keep the boat in the water because it just kept pushing itself out. There's just so much more power uh-huh. that it would, it would just launch all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and back to the simplicity of a jet boat, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and this one came, you know, when I bought it, it had the right plate and a few things on it. So it was, it was nice. Uh, uh, overall, I, I never, the, the, the intake in it was set the way Roger said it in 1976. That intake's never been out. Oh, no kidding. Wow. Yeah. So we never change the angle, never get anything with it. Mm-hmm. It just sounds uh, like it's probably just a stock intake. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, in that class, are there any, is there any um, rules on that kind of stuff? You can run low pro- profile intakes you, or anything or? Right. You can, real low, you can run the low pros and that. It's, it's uh, no problem. It's. The, the main thing is is the cubic inch deal. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's pretty much it. And, you know, a few safety things, just uh, seats being through bolted and and things like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A full stringer boat. So if you have a, if you had a Sanger with a with a motor box in it, yeah, you'd have to have full stringers put in it. Oh, OK. Yeah. And that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what other setup stuff? And is the motor, do you guys run the motor forward at all or is it just back on the? back in the stock location we're in stock location mm-hmm. yeah we don't we don't have a drive line on that at all mm-hmm. um yep yep and it would probably help it a little bit if we moved it forward just a touch you know just to get it to uh, get bring that that uh pivot point a little bit farther forward uh-huh yeah. interesting so what uh what do you know now that you didn't know when you started racing have you learned a lot Oh yeah, and my son, it's been great for my son. Uh, you know, I, I'm still, uh, you know, I'm, I, I've never set an intake, I've never done any of that stuff. Uh, I still, I wanna do that stuff. My son is taking pumps apart and put them together and uh, he's more into that. And I, to be honest with you, I'm older. I, I don't wanna be wrenching on stuff all the time. Uh, yeah. I don't, mind, I don't mind pulling the motor out, putting it back in. That's, you know, that's an hour mm-hmm. each way, so no big deal. But I don't really want to start tearing stuff down and having things on the bench. And, mm-hmm. and I'm just, uh, I, I think I'm beyond that now. Just, yeah, I, I just didn't have somebody do it for me now. Yeah. <laughs> now, now do you, you know, that brings up, do you, have a, do you have a shop where you're doing all this or you just do it all down at Fiber Concepts? Or? Well, on the build on the new one, it's just at uh, Fiber Composites. And then, like I said, uh, Jason Rourke is building the, um, the trailer at his place. And hopefully we'll we'll make those up soon, um, and then we'll just see if it sells. Then hopefully it goes to somebody's garage and they start working. That'd be great. Yeah, uh, I would just like to see some some new Rogers out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And so again, it's a great looking boat, and they they always were just really nice looking boats. Yeah, and and I think that and Kelly over there is she really promotes all these. Uh, trying to save all these old boats, and mm-hmm. she just buys these old molds and stuff because she doesn't want to see them destroyed. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Uh, and so, it, it's it's more her doing that than Joel. She's uh-huh. the one that's hooked on the old boats. Oh, funny. Uh, you know, Joel looks at me and looks at her, and, and, and a lot of us and thinks we're all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, he's got that whole "I have to pay the bills" mindset, so. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Yep. Exactly. So, uh, and, and they're all, the whole crew over there are great people. Cause I've spent a lot of time. I mean, I, I was waxing on the mold over there and, uh, and hanging with those guys and they're, they're all super people. Yeah. Well, that's cool. So, he let you, he lets you actually get in and, and do that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it, well, I think it's probably one of those things that nobody wants to wax a mold. So, mm-hmm. so if the guy, <laughs> If this old guy wants to come in and wax them old, he'll let me put a couple of coats on there. <laughs> now, now, how does it work? It, it, so you'll just store store the mold at his place? Well, what, we got it all waxed up, and they don't have the facility to keep everything indoors and clean. So I went up there with my – I have an enclosed trailer, uh, 28 foot enclosed. I went up there, backed up to him, and we put that, that mold in the trailer. So I have it here at my house. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the next day that wants it, it's ready to go again. It's not going to be sitting out in the weather. Gotcha. So you'll you'll yeah. just have to haul it up there and drop it off. Yeah. Yeah. It's no no big deal. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather do that and preserve the mold that mm-hmm. way. 
So, so tell us. So, when the he, you know, they, they spray the gel coat in the mold, and how long, how long do they let it set up these days before they pull the, it out? Okay, so so they tape one day, gel the next day, and then they start the laminating the, the following day, and um, uh, after the laminating, I think it actually they didn't get on the wood the next day. I think it's, it was a couple of days and they got the wood in there. It's not that it couldn't be done. It just didn't get done. And, um, so after that, after the, uh, stringers were, uh, glassed in the transom wood and I had a, a sub floor put in, but I had it put in way down at the bottom to get as much depth as we could. So it's a little bit of a flat floor in there. Um, I think it was by the time they, they, they had time to pull it. It was a, a a little over a week, I think, mm, okay. when they pulled it, mm -hmm. uh, which which I think is good. If it sits in the mold for a week, there's nothing wrong with that. I've always heard that. Oh, yeah, know, absolutely. The boat is going to be a little more true and everything. It is cured. The longer it cures in the mold. Yeah. Uh, but there's also, I think there's that fear factor. Okay, we got to get this out of here, so it doesn't stick. We get, this is oh, the first okay. one. Okay. This is the first one. This whole, this whole thing is a test. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, test test for you and your in your uh, probably patience and a lot of stuff, <laughs> pocketbook. Yeah, and... yeah, exactly, exactly. And you know, and if that molds, if it sticks in the mold, now you've got gel coat repair to do on the on the boat, but you also have um, mold repair to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's uh, one of those things. It's better to be safe and wax the heck out of it. Yeah, and, but that's uh, that's pretty amazing. Is I mean, as old as everything is, technology and the whole bit, how it's just it's just kind of been seamless yeah yeah and and you you know the the i in, in my opinion if you look at uh, you know a brand new boat and a brand new mold and all that stuff they are going to be straighter and cleaner than these ones from the 70s the expectations are much higher mm -hmm. yeah but uh um they're not perfect uh although i don't think you can find a boat that's perfect and it's fiberglass it's not right it's just never perfect it's not it's not sheet metal but uh um, it's just it's just the way they are this is mm -hmm. uh, a very nice mold roger really took care of his stuff i mean he was his bread and butter so you know this stuff his molds really didn't sit outside and stuff i did talk to his daughter well didn't speak to her but messaged her on facebook and stuff and you know we got her blessings on this stuff and she's excited to see these come out too so it was really kind of cool i told her when this thing gets done i'm going to tow it by her house and have her check it out and she was she seemed excited about oh, that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, very cool. And and how's the interest been so far? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh I posted on a few Jet Jetbo sites, mostly SoCal on the last one. And I I mean there's you know, I, I get people message me. I you know, I've had so many people message about prices on the two different halls. And I think everybody's just waiting to see these boats out there. Um, but uh, the response has been really great. And for people who know, they just know Rogers are a great, a great hull design. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I told Rogers' daughter, I said, we're not going to skimp and do anything cheesy on him or anything like that because it's, it's his legacy that, that we're carrying on. So we want to build a good quality product. So, you know, it, it, it sounds like it's all been going great, but there, there's had to be a hiccup. What's, what's, What's been the biggest challenge so far? I think um, the biggest challenge is just uh, getting getting it rolling. You know, it's it's one of those things that uh, I know uh, Fiber Composites is just really busy with a lot of their other stuff, and 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 I understand that uh, everybody's busy. And then there's the supply thing and the cost of everything. So um, I, I think that the biggest uh, I, I mean, I would love to see this boat, you know, uh, ready late summer. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, let's face it; they, they do a lot of boat repair work, and they're they're really well known for all their glass work and stuff like that. So they are bombed. Yeah. And everybody else, you know, through the summer, every hey, I'm going to be gone. I, I need my boat done in two weeks. You right. know, yeah, right. It's that kind of thing. Right. The, this boat is not one that's that's got that kind of pressure on it. So. You know, I let them get there, do their normal normal thing, and and then work on mine when they mm -hmm. 
you know, have the time. So, yeah. uh, but I definitely want it ready for the spring and to start hitting things and, you know, some of those, those shows and boat races. Mm-hmm. Do you have, do you have a, do you have a, a hit date when you, when you first want to debut it? I actually don't. Okay. <laughs> I don't. I, I wish I could give you a date. Uh, but, uh, between, and, and definitely it's between my work that I, I have, you know, my cabinet shop and this, this is just like another in Denver. In Denver. So it's mm-hmm. one of those things that, that, uh, uh, I'm not doing it full time. Mm-hmm. So it hasn't taken a, a real high priority, especially now that it's winter time, yeah. but I don't want it to just die in the winter either. So we want to have it ready for the spring. Mm-hmm. You can't get the, it, you can't get the cabinet shop to understand that this is this is this is what's important now. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> you know. See, I had a ten man shop, a good sized cabinet shop at uh-huh. one time, and and now you know I'm older. It's just me and one guy, so we do all facets of it from from you know from cutting pieces of wood to you know big sheets to smaller pieces and building them and. And I do the lacquering and all the finished work, and we do the install. So we don't have to do a lot of work anymore, mm-hmm. and, and I'm good with that. But uh, in a lot of ways, I feel like I work harder now than I ever did because I don't have the ten guys. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, I can't just bail all the time because if I bail, that's fifty percent of the crew. You're right. You're uh, right. So, uh, but but you know, this is a little bit of our slow time. We're either jammed before the holidays or through the holidays, or we're a little light. And this year, we're a little light. So. Uh, I want to try to um, put a little more focus on on the on the boat stuff and and uh, see if we can't get something going and uh, get this one done and kind of working on what we're going to do next, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which I really want really want to put a nineteen out because I think the the river guys like the nineteen. Okay, you know this that's I probably had three quarters of people say build a nineteen, and maybe I should have, but I wanted a twenty so. <laughs> <laughs> so I did that, and and like I said, the twenty is just a really good looking uh, mini cruiser. It, it's it's so sleek and so yeah, it's kinda, it really is. It, yeah, because if you look like that uh, Carrera Eclipse, the twenty footer, mm-hmm. you know that's a low profile kind of deal, and you just don't see very many of that that kind of a boat out there. Mm-hmm. And this one being an open bow, at least you can get a couple more people up there. And uh, and my thought was to do a tonneau cover over the front that would match whatever gel coat scheme that oh, we okay. do, and then it would kind of blend a little bit. So kind of old school again. Do a uh-huh. tonneau cover, kind of look cool, and uh, from from a distance it wouldn't necessarily look like a family family boat. Right, right. But, no, that sounds but, like a good idea. I've, I've always I don't know if I've ever seen anybody do that, but I've thought about that before. I thought that'd be a really good idea. Yeah, yeah, it kind of hit me because I'm, I'm like I said, I'm not an open valve person, so I wanted to cover it up somehow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, cool. I'll be, yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun to see that. So, yeah. So, um, where can uh, where can we tell people they can find you or find you have a website and or any plans I for that? Or I don't have a website, uh, only because we haven't really got anything out there yet. But uh, you know. You mentioning that, and I've had a couple other people do the same. That we should probably get something going. Uh, I want to get this first one done under our belts, and you know have the templates made and all the different things ready to go. Uh, but um, uh, I'm on SoCal Jeppos. Seventy six Bonneville is my is my handle on there. Okay. Everybody knows me. I've been on there forever. Uh, and Ron One, I mean, just on Facebook. I'm, I'm public and they can see some of the boat stuff there too. Okay. There you go. And, uh, you know, they can, uh, and from there they can message me and I'll give them their, my, my number. I've had calls from Florida, uh, Wisconsin, people that are watching this boat. Oh, fun. The, the one guy in, in, uh, in Florida says, you know, we've got our big boats tied up out here, but he says, when the water goes, goes out, tide goes out, he says, we can't get them out. Mm-hmm. He says, "I want to have a little boat to play with my grandkids and stuff mm-hmm. like that." So I'm watching this this 20 footer. Interesting. <laughs> I, I I have a good customer in Atlanta, and he's every time I go, I go out there usually once a year, and he's been telling me for probably 10 years now how California or West Coast jet boats are the coolest thing out there, and they just the guys are just dragging them back there like crazy. So well, and now we now we have Finnegan out there. Oh yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Boy, he's uh yeah, it's gonna be really interesting. He's he's really stirred up. You know, he's he's so mainstream now and it's it's amazing when I see in his boat videos get more traction and more views in his car stuff. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. And to have that, you know, those types of boats out there on those lakes. Uh huh. You know those fishermen are not waving to them. <laughs> saying hello <laughs> yeah uh, but, yeah but but there's something about those big blocks and, and uh and and the noise they make i just love it yeah absolutely yeah and there's nothing you know we talk about all the time that you know i mean jet boats are simple but man bang for the buck it's they're they're pretty cool you know it's even a you know 65 75 65 70 mile an hour jet boat to the average guy it's it's a it's a pretty fun pretty fun ride yep Absolutely. And just like you said, it's so simple. There's not that much maintenance to them. You don't have to worry about stuff in the water. The servicing is cheap. I mean, you're not taking your out drive in. You're not, you hit something, you know, you're not going to hit anything with a jet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you don't have a thousand dollar prop hanging down there. Right. Right. So, so yeah, you yeah. can take that thousand you're going to spend on a prop and just keep putting it in the motor. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so, they, used to say, they used to say, what, everything over like 65 miles an hour is $1,000 a mile an hour. Yeah, so. probably, probably. So. <laughs> well, hey, well, great. I appreciate you talking to me, and, and uh, I'll let you know when uh, when I get ready to publish this. But, uh, but yeah, it's really interesting to hear your story, and, and uh, good luck with everything. It, I'll, I'll well, keep my eyes on it. So <laughs> Thank you very much. It was great talking to you. I, um, I, I look forward to seeing this, so. Um, I'm excited, and I'm excited to get some boats out there. All right. Well, great. Well, good luck with everything, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Thank you for listening to Powerboat Talk. If you like what you heard, please head over to Apple Podcasts and give us a five-star review. For more Powerboat Talk, follow us on Facebook or Instagram, or visit our website at powerboattalk.com.